In this video, I'm going to show you the Sower Sequencer Extension in Reaper. Now, so is a MIDI editor that looks and works like a step sequencer, but with one difference. It writes musical notes directly into MIDI clips or MIDI items in Reaper. So let's take a look. So if we go to the Reaper homepage, we can go up here to Resources and choose the Reaper stash, which should look like this. Then we could search for the extension plugin, Sower. And two versions should show up, one for Mac and one for PC. Choose the one you need and install it. I should mention that the Mac installer didn't work for me, but there are instructions in the download in a README document that explained how to do it manually. And then it worked fine. You also need to have the SWS extensions installed for this to work. So after it's all installed, we can open up Reaper. So a project set up here with a keyboard track, a drum track, and a synth. On my drum track, I've already added some drum samples to the track. I have a kick, a snare, some claps, a hi-hat, and an open hat. And I use the Resample-Matic 5000 plugin for this purpose. Although you could use any drum machine plugin you want. But it's important to note that the Sower extension or plugin doesn't make any sound. It needs to trigger something through MIDI. So that's why I set up these drums. So now, as long as it's installed correctly, we can go up here to the extensions menu and find the Sower plugin or extension. I've seen some videos where it shows up on top, but it should show up in this menu somewhere. And it looks like this. Now we could choose to dock it if we want, but I'm going to leave it floating. Then we could choose how many bars we want it to play whether it be one, two, or four, and then loop them, let's use two. And over here, we could choose how many steps we want. 16th notes, up to 64th notes, or quarter notes, but let's choose 16ths. And over here, we could adjust our preferences. I have it set to the maximum grid as 64th notes, the default channel being one, and the default pitch being C2 which is where I start drums with my kick on C2. Again, you could change it here. And I turn on all these other options and chose the skin right here, which changes how the plugin looks. Again, choose your preference. So now we just go up here and choose to add channel. We'll choose which track we want to trigger. I'll choose drums, channel one, and using Resample-Matic 5000, the samples show up instead of the notes, letting us know which sample we're going to trigger. Let's start with the snare, hit OK, and it creates this little sequencer or step sequencer we can trigger our notes with. So if I click it, we hear the snare. And notice, it automatically creates a MIDI item based on the length we chose. Again, right down here, two bars. And notice when I click it again, it removes that item. I'm going to put one on B2 and four for each measure, which will sound like this. And we can change it very easily or even drag to create every note in the spot or delete them the same way. Now let's add a clap section. Go over here again, add channel. This time we'll choose our clap. Let's put it above by right clicking, move up. Now the clap is above the snare. I'm just going to put a clap over here, which sounds like this. Notice it keeps playing past our section. If we wanted to loop, just hit this button and it creates a loop within Reaper.
Or we could do it this way. Turn this off, zoom out to the entire project, and trim this to the whole project, and it loops our part. So if we change anything in here, it changes it on each loop, as it loops from bar three on. Now let's add a kick part. Add another channel. This time we'll choose kick. And let's program the kick part. That sounded pretty good. We could also right click our notes to adjust their properties, like their volume, some offset and length. But let's add some hi hat. Add channel. We'll do the closed hat. And let's add another one for the open hat. And put them above the others. Let's put an open hat over here. <laughs> Sounding good. And we could also adjust the velocities of the note. Let's select the hi hat. Hit this button right here. We can see the velocities for it. We can make some of them quieter compared to the others. Now you'll notice because everything is in its own item, we don't really need this anymore. We can close it or even delete all the parts, remove all channels. It all stays right in here. We could double click it, and that opens it up in the MIDI editor. We could re edit all our notes from in here, not even use the SOAR extension anymore. We'll go back to it. Add channels again, and the part is still there. So it's always linked to the part we recorded. Now we could also use this for pitched instruments. Let's clear this. Let's add it again. Add channel. This time we'll choose a synth. And we're going to switch it from multi mode. To single channel mode, which creates different lines for every note we use. And then we could trigger this synth with it. Right now it sounds like this with my MIDI controller. But we could trigger it instead with the sower extension. Just drag some notes. And again, it's created down here. delete them like this and just randomly add them to create an arpeggio with a step sequencer workflow. Let's hear it. And again, we can close it and not use it anymore. 
and store the part completely in here. In our MIDI editor. So that's pretty much it. That's the sewer, sequencer, extension, and reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.